Okay, so here we are in test HMD, and I have the Pimax Crystals wide FOV lenses. This is just going to be a bit of a first impressions video um, for it, since uh, I want to wait until the distortion profile is finalized before I do a super in-depth analysis and comparing with the normal 35 PPD uh, too deeply. But I am going to have this a uh, few things I want to note here because this technically isn't my first time using it. Uh, Pimax put out an update just today, which uh, it slightly increased the stereo overlap and brought the vertical FOV uh, up noticeably. So uh, I'm going to have a few things to talk about there. But first, let's just see how the clarity is, because I think it's supposed to be pretty similar to the other lenses. Let's see. Okay. So line 10 is F. D, uh, P, L, T, uh, that's C or a G, I think, E, O, and uh, let's see, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 I got just almost everything there, the, the C was a little bit unsure, line, the 11 is... A bit less legible. I can make out some of them. Like in the middle, I'm pretty sure that's an L. View to the right, that's an F, and then T. So compared to my experience with the normal 35 PPD lenses, the at least in this little test, it seems pretty similar. Maybe it's a tiny bit less sharp, but overall, first impressions are that's pretty similar there. Um, I am noticing that the chromatic aberration. It does seem like it's a little more noticeable at the very edge of my peripheral. In the center area, it seems reasonably fine and not so bad. But yeah, over here, which is kind of the part where you get added to the extra FOV, certain elements, it, it's definitely very noticeable. Like the there's yellow kind of bleeding into the black spots on those things there. But like the white in the text, it's not really so bad. So it's going to depend on what you're looking at there, I guess. So, but let's do the FOV measurements. So <clears throat> first up, we have vertical and okay. So the top has disappeared there. Uh, that's the same behavior as a normal 35 PPD. The bottom we get about, let's see. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I can just, just barely see that. I probably, we're going to call that like 102, maybe 101. Because it, it, it feels a slightly harder to see than it does with the 35, so I, it, it's close enough. But the horizontal is, that's the big one they advertise the increase for. So let's see what we get here. All right, yeah, we're already past what I got before. We're still going. 112, 114. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna call that. I guess 114. It feels very hard to see, so maybe it's like one. Yeah, 113, 114. Okay, so that's what we got there. And I will show on screen what I got using the 35 PPD lenses. So. It's definitely a noticeable increase. Um, we got about t uh, 10, 12 more horizontal. That's nice. Vertical remained a mostly the same. Now, I'm also going to show my WIM FOV results. And um, doing that, I got about similar increase, about 10 degrees uh, horizontal. Um, the vertical went down by 2 degrees on WIM FOV. And then the diagonal went up by about 10 or so, like 8, 10, depending on the axis, I think. Uh, I'm doing this from memory. So that actually is a pretty significant bump there. And then I also checked the rendered numbers. And oh, before I show those, I do want to preface. So this is a work in progress. And so these are prototype lenses and they're still, it's not the finalized distortion profile. So things may be subject to change. Like compared to yesterday, they've already bumped the vertical up and then the stereo overlap slightly improved by a few degrees. So anyway, they're, here they're rendered with the, that lines up. It's about 
uh, close to 115. It's like 114 in a few decimal places. Vertical is about almost the same as the 35 PPD. It's one degree less rendered. And then the diagonal, turning the hidden area mask on and off, that resulted in a bit of a bump on the diagonal, which I also noticed in WimFOV. I'm going to briefly again show what my results were there. I got a few extra diagonal disabling the hidden area mask. And I am also running that right now because I can't see slightly more. So, yeah, those are the FOE results. Um, it, it definitely feels noticeable here, but let's go, let's check out, like, an actual game and see how that feels. All right, so here we are in Half-Life Alex because this is a pretty high-fidelity game. I thought it'd be a good place to maybe look and just see how the overall clarity feels. It's not got a bunch of wide open areas, but uh, it's still decently wide. Yeah, like in the subway, I can I can sort of fe feel it right now. Let's see. So, yeah, I definitely notice the stereo overlap is quite a bit lower than the normal lenses, um, which that's to be expected from everything I measured. It going at least by rendered values, it's um, gonna be about the same as the arrow. Uh, slightly better, but that's rendered, so it's gonna just depend on, like, your face ship, for your face shape, because you never know. And so, uh, yeah, if you're good with stereo, lower uh, stereo overlap, then you're probably gonna, you'll probably be fine here if you've lived with the arrow, but if you do value high stereo overlap, uh, um, that's probably already going to be a non-starter, and it seems like they sacrifice a stereo overlap almost by, like, a one-to-one -one ratio for a horizontal FOV. So, if, like, you are feeling to try around playing around with software offsets, you probably just want to go with the 35 PPD lenses normally. Um, but as for me, I... I like, I, I notice it, but it, it's not as bad as I was expecting, in looking around here, like, in some contexts, I kind of do see it a bit and notice it, but most of the time so far, it's actually not that bad. It's actually kind of funny, because in the previous upda uh, update with this, where it was only a couple degrees lower, it actually was rather noticeable and bad for me. I Those, like, two degree difference really <laughs> mattered for some reason. So, it's a bit, it's, I'm liking it a bit more than I expected, but I'm gonna, I have another crystal coming because I'm getting my beta test unit exchanged for a retail production one. I will have both of them for a couple days, so I can do a direct side-by-side -side comparison of uh, the two crystals. And see exactly how I feel, which I think that's going to be interesting and something I will be saving for my uh, full review <laughs> for my full review of these. Right. So the wider FOV does feel a bit more noticeable here, and I definitely do appreciate it with some stuff. Looking around here, the chromatic aberration, it, it's really not bad. Like for the more muted colors, cr the CA, it's fine. I don't really notice it. It's only in certain contexts, or it seems like very high contrast stuff, like white on black, that seems to be where it's the most prevalent. As for the edge-to-edge -edge clarity, um, yeah, like about right here, edge-to-edge -edge clarity feels maybe about the same, maybe a tiny, tiny bit worse, um, Let's see, but looking up and down, let's see, I know some people, I know at least one person complained about vertically. Vertically, the uh, the edge to edge feels exactly the same for me. Horizontally, it does feel a little bit worse. For the really small text, I can't quite make it out past here. That says like holiday. But the one big problem right now is the lack of eye tracking, because I really do hope that's something they will um, get out to regular consumers, or I, they'll add before this ships out to regular consumers. I don't know what the time frame and the timetables are for uh, adding that, but I hope it is sooner rather than later, because even if I do decide I like these better than the 35 PPD, I'm... I would not 
use these over the normal ones if they don't get eye tracking. So that's like my big one I'm trying, I'm hoping for. So after trying the updated uh, profile for the lenses in a couple of games, here are some of my brief overall thoughts. Do keep in mind the prototype nature of these and work in progress software, so things may change by the consumer release and I will do a follow-up video in more depth once everything is finalized. I was honestly expecting to dislike the reduced stereo overlap more, and at times it does still bother me. But at least for me, I am finding the F extra FOV maybe worth it. And I'm going to do some more testing and exact side by side with my replacement crystal before I too strongly judge. I'll be interested to see how that goes, as I'm not entirely sold on the trade offs, but I really do like the FOV. The overlap, going by rendered numbers, and from what I've seen some other people measure, is about Vario Arrow tier, a few degrees better. It was worse before the update, so if you can live with the arrows overlap, then you'll probably be okay here. But keep in mind that's rendered, so it's going to depend on your face shape. But if stereo overlap, Overlap is an important factor for you that really does matter. I don't really expect much to change on this front, so I'd probably just stick with the normal lenses because it's probably going to be a non-starter. And the FOV increase is not, wow, I'm blown away big, but it's definitely present. I noticed it right away going in through familiar areas, but that's also because FOV is a really big thing for me, so I might just be more sensitive there. If you have used the Vive Pro 2 with a thin gasket to get all the FOV, then it's basically like a better version of that. Borderline the same horizontal with a decent bit more vertical. When it comes to overall clarity, the wide FOV lenses have similar strengths and weaknesses as the current ones as well, just it's bigger. Edge to edge horizontally is perhaps a little bit worse. Chromatic aberration is good in the center, but it's a little more noticeable on some elements at the further edges of your FOV than the normal one. I do really hope Pimax gets eye tracking working before shipping it to consumers, because the cost of these is I think supposed to be $130, $150, unless you pre-order, then it's about $60. But if it doesn't have working eye tracking, it'd be hard to recommend at full price, and I think that's going to give some bad impressions, and I'd stick with the normal lenses solely based on that till the eye tracking works. Performance should be similar as well, since the resolution is only a couple percent higher. I will show on screen what is now versus normal lenses. Might take a little more in-depth look at that in my full review in more detail, though. Initial impressions are somewhat positive, though, but Pimax, don't decrease the stereo overlap anymore to try and get more FOV. This is already probably as low as some people will be able to tolerate reasonably well. More lower is just going to be a bad idea. Even I don't think I'm going to be able to tolerate much lower than this. And those are my first impressions for the wide FOV lenses. I uh, think some people might like it, but the stereo overlap reduction is definitely going to be a deal breaker to some. If you did like the video, consider sticking around see what I do next. Probably going to take an in-depth look at every DFR setting on the crystal. Crystal, and if not, thanks for stopping by anyway, and perhaps I will see you again sometime. Later!